Hello? Hello, hello, good afternoon. Oh, who are you? Ah, sorry, we just moved next door. We're here to introduce ourselves. Pleased to meet you. Oh my, oh my, someone as young as you moved here? I see, I see. Welcome, Mom, our new neighbor here is here to say hello. Don't yell like that. Thank you for taking time to come over. They're the Rugu family. They just moved to the empty house next door. <gasps> oh, you're Raina, aren't you? My, how you've grown. <laughs> yes, I'm Raina. Thank you for remembering. <laughs> Mom, do you know her? Of course I do. You were living in Okinomiya then, so you probably don't remember, but they used to live next door, so you came back, huh? This village is better than the big city, is it? I don't remember much because I was so small when we lived here, but I feel this is where I belong. Then you'll fit right in. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. There's no need to hesitate. Being unreserved is the rule here, after all. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I thought I'd remember things if I walked around the village, but I still don't remember much. I do recall, however, the vivid breeze as well as the brilliant greenery. I don't remember the village, but I remember that this is my hometown. Red scars still remain on my body. They're hardly visible, and I can't even feel them. I'm sure they'll disappear soon. Now that I'm back in Hinamizawa, sometimes I wonder who I was back in Ibaraki. In fact, I think I wasn't myself in the moment I left. And now, by coming here, I finally regain my true self. I can hardly remember what I was like back in Ibaraki. Well, that's probably because of the med medicine. The medicine erased all my painful memories. Maybe that was for the best. I just wanted to be forgiven back then. I couldn't forgive my mother. I couldn't forgive Uncle Akihito. And more importantly, I couldn't forgive myself. I wanted somebody to acknowledge that I wasn't at fault. I wanted to be forgiven. So Oyashiro apologized. She told me I wasn't at fault because it was the curse of Oyashiro. That's how I was able to forgive myself. I didn't have to die by tearing my blood vessels out of my own body. I think people have to die because they become corrupted. That's why people try their hardest not to dirty themselves all their lives. I'm still living despite how dirty I am. I've been allowed to live. Is there still some filth left in me? Or am I all clean? I don't know. The only thing I know is that's the me who lived in Ibaraki and the me who's here right now are two different people. I no longer feel the need to take responsibility by ripping myself apart because of the filth. After arranging some furniture and unpacking some boxes, we finally had dinner. Although I hardly remember Hinamizawa, my father remembers things very clearly. Although it was around the time we lived here before, the Watanagashi Festival sure has grown huge these days. It's held at the end of June. Watanagashi? I've never seen it myself, so I don't know too much about it, but supposedly people let cotton absorb the filth in their bodies and drift it down the stream. Absorb the filth? You can wash down your filth down the stream, huh? <laughs> of course, humans are sinners. As we live every day, filth piles on our bodies, supposedly. And once a year, we get rid of the filth by letting the cotton absorb it. People become burdened with filth and sin by doing something bad. Court sentences can sell your crimes legally, but that doesn't mean the burden of sin of the filth will just go away. In other words, human hands can't erase human filth in this human world. The filth is something that humans can't get rid of, and that's why we need a god from a different world to do that. That's what I thought. But I'm surprised to learn about Watanagashi. Human hands erasing human filth in the human world, letting the cotton absorb the filth and drifting it down the stream. That means it's okay to live in this world. I tried to end my life because I couldn't forgive myself. But Yashiro apologized to me and told me to come back to Hinamizawa. And now, here in Hinamizawa, there's this Watanagashi, a ceremony to get rid of filth. This isn't just a coincidence. Hinamizawa is a place to wash away your filth. It forgives sins. It's a place of forgiveness. It's called a purification ceremony. Uh, I've heard of those before. Japanese culture is very strict about filth. You aren't allowed to remain in the spotlight if you accumulate too much. 
See? That's the reason why politicians and company presidents resign immediately once they find out about their dirty deeds. You must leave the spotlight if you're filthy. To put it in a bad way, the filth is basically pushed onto someone else, and they're held responsible for it. Sins and filth must be removed. That's why people push them onto someone else, and they try to get rid of the filth by sacrificing that person. And if that's the case, every time that filth is created, people will try to pass around responsibility for it. That's awfully hideous. It's almost like seeing demons in the human world. That's why they came up with the idea of letting cotton absorb all the filth. By doing so, people can live without making someone else take on the responsibility in sins and filth. Putting everyone's sins onto someone and killing that person makes that person a sacrifice. Who wants to be a sacrifice? That's why they desperately push their sins around. A purification ceremony is about replacing a human sacrifice with a non-human one. The purification ceremony dramatically changed Japanese culture. Before then, people always believed that someone had to become a sacrifice. In other words, even with filth, everyone can live without blaming someone else. Filth can be forgiven by a method other than death. Only existence higher than humans can forgive them. I was forgiven by Oyashiro and came back to this place. To Watanagashi, the purification ceremony that exists here. Letting cotton absorb the filth and drifting it away. There's no need for a sacrifice. That's why I've been allowed to live. The filthy me has drifted away, so the me that remains no longer is Rugu Reina. If I'm not Reina, then who am I? If I'm not without filth, without all the icky things, who am I? A name vaguely appeared in my head. My new name that only removes one of the letters from Reina, but I think it's a cute name. All the icky things are erased and forgiven with the removal of that one letter. So my name's no longer Reina. My name is... I see. No, you don't need to do that. You're a promising member of the Hinamizawa Fighters. We'll save your spot, so you can come back anytime, okay? Uh, I don't know about that, though. I have no idea when I can come back, so I thought I should at least resign for now. Satoshi says that he wanted to quit the Hinamizawa Fighters. I know very well of Satoshi and Sadako's situation, so I was expecting that he might say this. The relationship between Sadako and her aunt has gotten worse to the point that it can be considered abuse. When someone from the Child Consolation Center came, of course, her aunt behaved herself. Then immediately after, her harassment turned even more vicious. According to the neighbors, the aunt's scolding and Sadako's crying can be heard nightly, and sometimes it can go past midnight. Sadako's weekly physical checkup results are slowly growing worse, and we're trying to keep her stable by increasing her medication, but unless her, her relationship with her aunt improves, she's sure to go terminal and sink to madness. Although she isn't the type to become deranged, even at the terminal stage, She's a type who holds everything in, harboring her insanity inside. Just like she pushed her parents off the cliff two years ago, Sadako may kill her aunt. Thanks to the mountain dogs, the incident was resolved in an accident. At least she stepped aside, although he's still suspicious. If something like that happens again around Sadako, he's sure to investigate her mercilessly. I can't do anything more about Sadako's environment and change it for the worse. So I'm not surprised to hear that Satoshi wants to quit the baseball team so he can be with his sister more. Actually, I'm starting a part-time job. 
That's why I can't come to practice. A part-time job. Is there something you want to buy? Yes. It's almost Sadako's birthday. There's a teddy bear that Sadako's been looking at, and I want to get it for her. That's right. I remember the birthday of her insurance card. I think it's June 24th, right after the Watanagashi Festival. I see. You're such a good big brother. I'm sure Sadako will be thrilled. I hope so. I can tell Satoshi is also stressed out. To him, seeing Sadako being harassed is the same thing as being harassed himself. His stress can be released through moderate exercise such as with sports and also plenty of rest. If Sadako's being yelled at nightly, then it's easy to figure out that Satoshi isn't getting enough sleep either. I don't know what kind of job he's starting, but I don't think he'll be able to bend his stress on it. In fact, I don't like the idea of Satoshi taking a part-time job because he's already so worn out in every way. I asked him if he wanted me to help him pay for the present, but of course he declined the offer. It's a present for him, so he wants to earn the money himself. He's taking this part-time job only to earn enough money to buy Sadako's present, so it'll be a temporary thing. It's for a short period of time. Maybe it won't be that bad. Well, I want to stop him from working because I don't want him to get even more stress. He says that Sadako's birthday is near. I don't think I can stop him. Satoshi's determined. If I say any more, I may lose his trust. So I'll have to accept his leave his absence. Oh, coach. Uh, can I maybe borrow a bat? I completely misunderstood his words. I later found out he carried around that bat to protect himself. And I realized that even then, he was already showing some dangerous symptoms. He believed there would be a fourth mysterious death this year, and that he would be the victim. He became obsessed with the idea of someone after his life. That is a symptom of Hinamizawa's syndrome's terminal stage. Although I was involved so deeply with the syndrome, I was careless. A bat? What do you need a bat for? Satoshi had it as a bat, so he should have asked if he wanted to take it home, but instead, he asked if he could borrow it. When I think about it now, he said that that way to lighten his guilty conscience, but how could I have known that? Well, although I can't come to practice, I think I'll have a little time to practice swinging on my own. Uh, that's great! Be sure to take it with you, but make sure to do it in an open space, okay? It won't bother your neighbors, it's good to practice hanging a hitting tire. Sw hitting, I'm sorry. Swinging a bat can release stress, so letting him take his bat home will help. That's what I thought, but that was a huge mistake. I realized it only when things were already past the point of no return. Oof. Okay, I'll get going, thank you! Oh, don't mention it. Come back anytime, okay? Hi, I'm home! Hey, Uncle Hiroshi! Long time no see! Hey, Mion, are you going home? I have to give my clients a ride. A ride? <laughs> You're talking about your realtor business, huh? The Sonozaki family is one of the largest landowners here in the Himizai era. However, since all the land out here is in the countryside, it just ends up sitting here. Recently, the land owned by the Sonozaki family was put on sale in lots. At the family meeting, some of our relatives opposed the idea by saying that we shouldn't sell off land that was handed down from our ancestors, but Granny snapped and shut them right up. Some of the unused fields were also made into vacant lots and released for public sale. Actually, I had some questions about it too. The Sonozaki family is very wealthy and we have plenty of land as well as money, so why did we have to sell it off? What's more surprising to me is that Granny was the one who came up with the idea. I would have thought she would have gotten furious if someone even mentioned something like that. Okay, if you're ever near the station, be sure to shop, stop by. I'll treat you some cup of barley tea. Sure, thank you very much. So, how's your business going? I'm surprised there's actually city folks who are actually interested. It has to be one of those nouveau rich types who live in the big city and also want a house in the countryside. Well, I guess some people are curious. There's only one family seeking to move here, not to purchase a villa. He says he wants to build a studio, so he must be an artist of some sort. <laughs> That's great! Oh gosh, I better go now. Supposedly he planned a tour to show him the lots, and he's the one driving the bus. It should be about time for the tour and explanations to end. He left in a hurry. Hey, can I ask you something? Why did you want to sell our land? You don't like newcomers. I don't like newcomers, and I don't like big city people either. Uh, but the village needs them. It's like ventilating a room. Is it good for the village to have new people move in? This is a wonderful village, but the world is changing quickly. In the past, a very small change took 10 or 20 years to happen. It was such a quiet and unchanging village. Well, that's for a life. In this village, nothing is different from yesterday and today. It's too boring for me, though. 
Well, you made a friend, didn't you? Rena Ryu wrote here, and you got along great. You told me that you were happy that you had a friend your age. Yeah! Making friends unexpectedly is fun! I remember that you said school is boring when Rena's absent. Do you remember this? <laughs> Are you saying it's a good thing about letting new people move here? No matter how cold it gets, you still have to ventilate your living space. Otherwise, it gets filled with bad air and you'll suffocate to death. You open the window, even knowing the freezing cold air will come in. Letting outsiders move here is like ventilating the village? Sure. It lets in fresh air and gets rid of bad air like us. If I bring up the Hojo family, I know Granny will explode, so I won't. But I think what Granny's trying to say includes things like their ongoing isolation. Even now, when she remembers about what happened in the explanatory meeting, she gets really upset. But I guess even when she feels the need that these come to an end. But of course, she can't just say she'll forgive them, not when she's at this stubborn age. She can't lose face by openly saying they need to be forgiven. Honestly, I think she's behaving like a little schoolgirl who actually likes a person but treats them rudely when they're around. People need to start uh, raising people to when they're older to be more honest instead of like acting like stubborn people. Sorry, that's my honest opinion. Just say what you mean and don't care about whether or not you need to be respected. Anyway, maybe people really do go back to being children when they get old enough. I'm not just talking about Granny. The same can be said about all the old people in the village. No, maybe I should say the evil around here. That must must she meant by bad air. That must be what she meant by bad air. There's no use circling the air in a closed room unless you open the windows and let fresh air in. The air in the room will be purified. We don't know if there's actually going to be people moving here, but don't you think you're expecting too much from whoever does? <laughs> Just run a moving here. Change you, Mion. Whoever moves here will change this village. If possible, I hope some young and energetic people who have the charisma to lead will appear. They need to be the ones to put us old people away into heaven. <laughs> Are you thinking about Gramps? <laughs> Damn you. Nobody's thinking about him here. The housekeeper put away the tea set on the veranda. Okay, okay, I will. Mion. Hmm? The day Hojo Satoshi disappeared. You came to me, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> that is what woke me up. This problem with the Hojo family. We can't just let time take care of it. We have to take care of it ourselves as soon as possible. But you can't do it yourself, so you're going to have an outsider take care of it? That's the best I can do. No matter how bad your hand is, the next card can change the flow of the game, so maybe it's a good idea to draw cards from the stack. Your generation will be the new wind. Let that new wind come from the outside, and you'll be the wind from the inside. When both winds create a gale, the gust will blow away the stale air from the village. That's the epitome of leaving your problems to others. You're the one who started the fire and you're trying to have your grandchild take care of it? Oh, don't say that. As the new leader of the Somazaki family, bring the new wind into the village. If you're saying that's my job as your successor, please. Mion, I'm too old. The only thing I can do now is be despised by people. The wind chimes down quietly. Maybe it's a sign to let us know a cool breeze is on the way. I don't know if I wanted to use my, like, my old voice for this. <laughs> I don't think it would have been good. Goodness gracious. We were prepared to respond quickly this year. That's probably why we were able to start the investigation immediately by securing the crime scene. The victim is the wife of the younger brother, the Hojo couple. But she's an extremely suitable target for the fourth year of Oyashiro's curse. She has a horrible reputation among the locals, and after the incident, everyone says she deserved to be cursed. I have a general idea who the culprit must be. It's probably Hojo Satoshi, that innocent-looking kid. There's even a motive. The deceased abused his sister relentlessly, so this would be in revenge for that. Also, when he attended the inspection of the crime scene, he was rather frantic, yet also far too composed, as if he was totally unrelated to the incident. My intuition from many years of police work tells me eight or nine times ten of people so actually that is the perp. Let me try that again. Oops. Okay. Also, when he attended the inspection of the crime scene, he was rather frantic, yet also far too composed, as if he was totally unrelated to the incident. My intuition from many years of police work tells me that eight or nine times out of ten, someone who acts like that is the perp. 
I have no concrete proof, but if I question him, he'll shake him up a bit. I have a feeling he'll confess. For the victim to be so beaten up, the culprits must have some blood on him as well. If we can find that, then we'll have proof. At least it's a complete fool. I'm sure he's already gotten rid of it by now. If we can find any of the place that he said he's disposed of after he fesses up, we can convince the prosecutor too. That was a pretty insignificant as a standalone case. A confession from Hojo Satoshi would end it. Everyone except me must believe that. But if I look at it as part of the series of mysterious deaths, it won't be so easy. Either the three families of the village, or the Sonosaki family alone is directly involved in this. And if they're the ones pulling the strings, they must have instigated Hojo Satoshi into committing this crime. If so, Hojo Satoshi is someone who knows way too much about them. The Sonosaki family's actions were to remain hidden. If he couldn't connect them to the crime, would they let him run around freely? Hojo Satoshi is a loving brother who cares too much for his sister, and they set him up to kill his aunt at his fourth year's curse. After that, they'll eliminate the one person who can connect him to the crime. Hojo Satoshi is not just a simple criminal. He was set up. And after that, my suspicions went confirmed, for he abruptly vanished. He disappeared in such a puzzling way. He didn't run because he was afraid that his crime had come to light. Another culprit came to the picture. He was already arrested for a different crime, and furthermore, he died while in prison. He confessed to the information only the culprit himself would have known. Therefore, he must be the culprit. But as he's already dead, the investigation was closed. Then Hojo Satoshi disappeared a few days after the festival. It's obvious somebody doesn't want Hojo Satoshi to be connected to this incident. My boss put pressure on me to close the investigation and to file Hojo Satoshi's disappearance as a separate incident. He even handed over the case to a different section. The way that this case is closing so rapidly greatly resembles the same trick used two years ago with the Hojo couple's accident. There's no doubt it's the work of somebody who can put pressure on the police. As it happens, the Sonosaki family is the only one who can actually exact influence in the police department here in the Hinamizawa area. They may think that their trails are covered, but this points toward them more than clearly anything. According to my informant, Sonosaki Oreo mentioned the fourth year's curse of the family's meaning and hinted that she was the one behind it all. Hinting isn't a strong enough evidence, but there's no mistaking that Sonozaki Oreo is the one pulling the strings. I know they're the one who did in the old man, but I just can't grab them. The principal offender is still on the loose, but I'm sure he's sheltered somewhere by the Sonozaki family. I have to locate him and find that missing right arm. I'll return that arm to this grave and make the principal offender and the masterminds both bow down before it. Uh, however, just like how Hojo Satoshi disappeared, it's possible the principal offender has already been eliminated. He's already been killed and buried somewhere nobody can find. If that's the case, then that's fine. I'll make the old bag who ordered someone to kill the old man slam her forehead on the ground before his grave. This I swear. Alright, Oishi. After the fourth year's curse, people are already saying that something will happen again next year. Even with all my preparations, I couldn't prevent the incident from happening this time. It's too late if something happens. I must keep my eyes on the core of the village before something takes place. There's a reason why I have to get to the bottom of this by next year. Because I'm retiring. My mother's been wanting to go back to her home in town in Hokkaido, and for a long time, she's been asking me to move where I retire. I feel that's the least I can do for her, so I agree to move to Hokkaido when I retire. So next year's my last chance to avenge the old man's death. It's happened four years in a row, so more than likely there'll be a fifth year's curse too. As a result, with a series of mysterious deaths, the village has been tightly knit together since the dam protests. They were told that the betrayers would be punished in the name of the curse. The masterminds has enough reason to continue with a series of mysterious deaths. According to the rumors, this year victim, the aunt, was cursed because she didn't participate in the Watanagashi festival. So there are villagers who believe that if they don't participate in the next year's Watanagashi, they'll be cursed. There'll be a huge festival next year for sure. Something. Something will happen. The series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa, also known as the Curse of Oyashiro. I'll avenge the old man. I will definitely, definitely will. Oops, sorry, I didn't do Oishi's very well. That I did last week. Anyway, I don't know what to do. <laughs> My name is Maiwara Ichiro and I'm hopelessly lost. I came to Hinamizawa on a tour to find a lot for a vacation home. When the realtor finished explaining some details, he told us to take a walk until the departure time. Such beautiful scenery and fresh air. I let my senses guide me and here I am. Where am I? 
I still have a little time before the departure, but I'm completely lost. This is basically the middle of nowhere, but people actually do live here. If I keep walking, I should run into somebody, then I can ask for directions. Don't worry. Wait, you know, I, we already read that part, technically, so we don't need to... Alright, yeah. We can just splice that part. I think I got really angry and I didn't want to keep recording. Me, there's a suspicious person who's mumbling some weird stuff over there. <laughs> Rika, that's not a suspicious person! Uh, 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 sorry, I'm not suspicious. <laughs> uh, but you've been staring at my chest and legs, Nipa. No, no I'm not. Don't turn me in, I really wasn't staring. I was using this mirror to fix my hair. <laughs> I don't really know what you're talking about, but it sure sounds interesting. Like father, like son. The girls teased me for a while, and they got tired of doing that, they went back to dancing around. Realizing whatever I said would backfire, I decided to leave them alone and sat down and watched them play. I wonder how old they are. They seem rather young, but maybe they could be close to Keiji's age. If we move here, Keiji might not meet them at, might meet them at school. If you'd see them at school, then... They were girls that lived here. If all the children in Hinamiza are like them, then even if living a rural life may have some challenges, it's a good reason for us to move here. We're not very good parents. We didn't understand what Keishi was going through and left him alone until the very end. According to the parenting book I bought, the first few problems are calls for help. It doesn't matter what the action itself is, but the fact that those actions are occurring is a primitive appeal from the child seeking communication. Even since we can, that's one of the reasons why we don't notice such signs. We can only hear words through our ears, and we can't sense the signs coming from our son's heart. Keiichi probably thinks it's all his fault. Of course, he's not absent of blame. Humans aren't dogs or cats. We should know what's right and what's wrong, but it's our fault too as his parents. To let him think that he had to go that far for us to be able to understand him is really pathetic and disappointing of us. If we had understood him and hadn't cornered him, Keiichi wouldn't have done that. So the incidents weren't only Keiichi's fault. Everyone in the Maibar family was to blame. I want to explain that to him, but he's still too young and hot-headed to be able to understand. Right now the guilt he's feeling is basically crushing him under its weight. He doesn't even have the will to live. My wife is the same. She's blaming herself for forcing him to study for better grades. She thinks that's why the incidents took place. And I am no different. I'm blaming myself for not being able to be involved in my son's education, and that's why the incidents took place. The cross will forever be on our shoulders, even after the injured child accepts our apologies. In our cold society would tell us to die under the weight of that cross. Even so, we have to live. We have to accept our sins and carry our burdens on our shoulders. Maybe we can start a new life here in this village. I thought all I, that's all I thought about as I watched the girls play. Keiji needs friends like them. Friends like those girls who will offer him so much more than the friends who only talk about cram schools and exam results. The girls are playing near a sign that doesn't fit this open field. It's a sign about lots for sale, and the name of the realtor who brought me here on the tour is written on it. Does that mean we can live, even in this beautiful area if we wanted to? One of the girls spoke as if reading my mind. This is a wonderful village! You'll find lots of things that you don't have in the big city! Yeah, that's right. I think so too. But I think you'll bring some things from the city to this village that we don't have. Do we have anything? Sure you do! <laughs> we lived in this village for hundreds of years. Wait, oops, I messed up. We lived in this village for hundreds of years just like this. Nobody comes to visit and nothing happens. And so nothing ever changes. Isn't that what's good about this place? Didn't you come here because you wanted to change something? Yeah, you're right about that. We want new people to come here too! It's like breaking the dam that keeps the swamp water from flowing out. Water is purified by moving. If it stays motionless, then it's just a swamp. In fact, this village used to be named after a swamp up until the Meiji era, but the name was changed to Hinamizawa. The water in the swamp stagnates because it doesn't flow. But the water in the stream stays fresh. <laughs> Besides, you are all the ones who will teach us that. That dams can be broken and should be broken. 
Are they playing riddles with me? I have no idea what they're trying to say, but there's one thing I know. The villagers are waiting for new people to come here, and they want to build a future with those newcomers. I looked at the sign behind the girls one more time, so that I remember this place. I've already decided. We'll be waiting for you to move here, Maibara. Oh, there you are. Sir, how did you get this far out? A raspy voice from the distance ended this innocent moment. It's the realtor. I guess he's been looking for me because I didn't return. Sorry about that. I got lost. I apologized while scratching my head. I turned around to look for the girls, but they weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. The village was in an uproar because the fourth mysterious death in a row, which everyone believed would happen, actually did. Sonoko's aunt was killed. All the villagers feel rather satisfied about this incident, saying the curse finally fell on her for being a local troublemaker. But I know the truth. I saw the beaten-up body at the crime scene. I knew Satoshi was responsible for it. Her abuse towards Sonoko was getting worse and worse. Satoshi wanted to protect her, so he brought home a baseball bat. All the signs were there, so I didn't even need to hear from Satoshi. Yet I couldn't avoid questioning myself. I felt bad for the Hojo siblings who had no one on their side, so I tried to be their ally. In the end, I failed to be any help to them. The phone rang and it was Satoshi. He never called me before. What happened? Does he want me to help him? If so, I will. I truly feel that way. Hello, coach. Sorry to bother you while you're at work. Oh, don't worry. What can I do for you? Uh, I can't think of anybody else who has a car. A car? Sure, I have one. I'm in front of the toy store in Okinomiya. Not the one owned by Mion's uncle, but the other one by the dentist's office. Sure, I know where it is. I found a teddy bear for Sonic's birthday, but... Mm, it's too big to put on my bicycle. Too big? <laughs> Satoshi, how big is this teddy bear? Mm, I guess he didn't think about it and went to the toy store on his bicycle and now he's stuck. That's so typical of him. I can't help but smile warmly. In other words, he can't carry out both the bicycle and the teddy bear, so he wants me to come pick him up. I told him I'd be right over and headed to the toy store in Okinomiya. When I got there, I found the teddy bear he bought is a lot bigger than I imagined. Oh my! <laughs> this is huge! There's no way you can put this on your bicycle, huh? The teddy bear is so big that Satoshi can hardly wrap his arms around it. If he puts it on his lap on the passenger seat, he won't be able to see anything. We loaded the bicycle in the back seat and stuffed the teddy bear in the trunk. Boy, it must have been expensive. Uh, yeah. I guess. At first I thought he was sweating because of the heat, but he's acting oddly. As if he has a high fever and his consciousness is coming and going. What's wrong? Are you feeling okay? I guess. Well, I have a cold, I think. That's not good. You want to swim by the clinic? I'll give you a checkup. Thank you. When, I call when he called earlier, he didn't sound this way. Did he come ill all of a sudden? Why don't you put the seat back? Is it too cold? Are you okay? <sighs> His face is turning pale. I can tell he has a high fever. Satoshi was pushing himself to buy the teddy bear. A teddy bear this size can't be that cheap. For him to earn money in such a short amount of time, he must have worked hard for long hours. Maybe he felt relieved that now he got the teddy bear he wanted to buy. It's not unusual for a person to collapse after reaching his big goal. I'm proud of you for earning enough money to buy such a huge teddy bear. Sadako will be so happy. I... hope so. I'm sure she will be. I guarantee it. Our... Anna's gone. Our uncle isn't coming back. There's... 
Nobody who can hurt her in any way anymore, right? That's right! There won't be anyone who can hurt her, so you can relax now. Arana is gone, right? She died, right? Yes, she is dead. I performed the autopsy. There can be no mistake, she'll never abuse Sadako again. Are you sure? Did you really confirm that she's dead? Yes, I'm sure I did. So, even if I see someone who looks just like her, it's not her, right? It's not like she was actually alive and recovered, right? No, that's not possible. She'll never come back to us. Then, then, look, lady, she looks just like her, but it's not my aunt, right? Right? So she pointed at the oncoming car in fear. Of course, the car passed by quickly, so I couldn't see her face, but no matter how much she looks like her, it's impossible for her to be alive. Look! Look! Look at her! She looks exactly like her! She even looked at me! Calm down, Satoshi! Your aunt is dead, so no matter how much she looks like her, it's not your aunt! She looks just like her. Look! No. It must be her. It's my aunt! She's... I killed her. I bashed her head in repeatedly. Why? Why? I can only try to stay calm and drive. Satoshi's losing his cool. He's delusional. He's seeing his aunt come back from the dead. I finally realize... Satoshi is displaying symptoms of the terminal stage. I need to examine him once I get to the clinic. It's different from Sadako's case. We already have the cure. We can treat Satoshi. If I talk to the mountain dogs, they'll take care of the murder of his aunt. I can save both him from going terminal and give him back his peaceful days with Sadako. He was deranged until just a minute ago, but now he's gone quiet. He didn't fall asleep. I must get him to the clinic while Satoshi remains in this calm state. There's no guarantee he won't attack me while I'm driving. As if he knows what's going through my mind, Satoshi spoke to me quietly. Coach, is this the curse of Oyashiro? There's no curse. Please try to stay focused. Sadako, sorry. Until just before I brought the teddy bear, I was thinking about running away. That's why Oyashiro got angry. I'm a failure. He's a big brother. I'm... I'm... You don't need to say anything. Close your eyes and get some rest. We'll get to the clinic soon, and then I'll give you some medicine, okay? I feel like... There are maggots in my blood. It itches. Don't scratch! Don't claw your throat! We arrived at the back doors of the clinic. I slammed the brakes and stopped the car. Satoshi's already started to claw at his throat. I can't stop him by myself, and I asked for some help through the intercom. Some staff members came out immediately. Maybe Satoshi was surprised to see so many people at once. Maybe he started to resist. I don't even need to run tests. He's at level 5. He reached the terminal stage, and his thoughts must be filled with delusions. Maybe he thinks the staff members want to kill him. The staff members pinned his arms and legs down and gave him a shot to put him to sleep. Coach, coach, please, help me! Don't worry, I'll make you feel better, so please relax! Coach, please, take care of Sadako. Please take care of Sadako. After saying those words, he fell unconscious. My, my, what's going on? Satoshi suddenly displayed symptoms. Considering the amount of stress he's been under, it's just a matter of time. Or maybe he was holding it back until he bought the teddy bear. It's interesting that somehow we always find a live specimen around Watanagashi. Do you think it's the curse of Oyashiro? <laughs> I don't have time to listen to her nonsense. She's talking to... This is the school? Yeesh, this is really the sticks! Keiji, don't say stuff like that. People in this area love coming here. That was my first impression of the Hinamizawa Branch School. No matter how it looked like it, it doesn't look like a school at all. It even has a sign that says Hinamizawa Forestry Service. <laughs> You're right, we're borrowing this building for the Forestry Service, said the man they called the principal as he laughed heartily. Although it doesn't look like it, it is in fact a school. The rules may be a di different from the ones you went to previously, though. Are you okay with that? Uh, yes! I heard all the grades are put in the same classroom at the school, but I didn't believe it. 
But I really think it really is true. You're all younger than I am, so I guess it'll be like kindergarten. Although it'll be interesting compared to my previous school where everyone looked the same age. If you transfer here, you'll probably be the boldest boy in the class, so you'll have to be a good role model for the younger students. The younger students have a tendency to copy bad habits from the older ones. I'll be keeping my eyes on you too, so make sure you make sure of that, okay? Uh, I understand. I'll do my best. Keiichi, what she means is the textbooks aren't the only things that you learn from. As a member of the class and also as an older student, you have to be a good example. I know that already! After that, she brought us to an empty classroom and showed us where my desk would be. Since we're all still growing, I'm sure our sizes are very different. There are some desks that are way too small for me to even put my legs under and some that are just perfect for me. There's some approximately 30 desks in here, but since they're all different grades that are in the same room, I'm sure it is very lively. There's also a wall full of calligraphy and art from different grades. It's all pretty exciting. Nothing like my previous school. It reminds me of the days when I truly enjoyed my school life. Dad, I like it here. I like the school better than the one in the town. I think my son likes it here. I want him to go to this school too. I see. The school in Okinomiya has more resources and better teachers, though. Even while saying that, she looked happy to hear that the new student would be transferring into her class. My father and the teachers went back to the teacher's office to get the transfer process going. In the meantime, I decided to stay in the classroom and look around. I didn't care about the move. I lost the will to live because of what I did. I didn't have any willpower and I couldn't even get out of bed. So when my parents told me about the move, I thought that wouldn't change anything. But after the move, something did change. I want to restart my life. I want to restart my life and become someone I always wanted to be. Here in Hinamiza and at the school, I can do that. I'm not going back to who I was. I'll never again think that good grades are the most important thing in this world. I have a feeling I can learn things that are really important in life here at this school. I never had the chance to learn them before now. It's almost embarrassing to put it into words, but they're extremely valuable things. And if you don't learn them, you won't become a decent adult. The students at this school learned them a long time ago. To them, they're a given. Yet I have to spend time learning about them even at this age. How to make friends. How to play with friends. To play. Things that you can only learn from play. Things like socializing with others, etc. etc. It seems so easy. But it'll take me a while to learn them. I pushed those things aside and devoted myself to studying. I'm not trying to say studying is important, but you shouldn't become blinded by it. If someone says studying good grades are the most important things in his life, he's talking bullshit! So I can start my life here at school. Finally, I can always become someone I wanted to. I noticed two girls looking at me through the window. The schoolyard must also be a playground for these children because I saw a lot of them playing here earlier. I guess those two noticed me walking around the classroom and became curious. I guess that's natural. I'm a stranger to them. I should stay alone and let them know I'm starting school next Monday, maybe? Finally, we've been waiting for so long. <laughs> this has changed things because Keiichi is the six on the die. Yes, he is, but his die rolls a one far too often. <laughs> That's not Keiichi's fault, though. It's all your fault, Hanyu. It's because of you. Apologize to Keiichi. <laughs> uh, do you know my name? She said my name, didn't she? Did I hear wrong? I never met her before. Nipa, are you a new student? Uh, 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 nice to meet you. I'm my bar Keiichi. I'm starting next Monday. Take care of me, okay? Hello, uh, uh, sure thing. Here's a message for you, Keiichi, from the front shrine man of the Furude Shrine. On your first day, be careful when you come through the door to the classroom. Also, there will be a thumbtack on the back of your chair, and there will be a toy frog in your desk, too. But even with this warning, you'll fall for it again and again. Your money's going to be disastrous. Poor Keiichi. <laughs> That's why it's fun. Why don't you try overcoming that fate sometime? <laughs> you'll be the one to teach us that in one of the many worlds, right? Huh? Huh? I'll be reminded of the prophecy made by the two girls next Monday because of the actions of a snaggletooth girl. I realize it too late, though. But I like it here. My name's Maibari Keiichi, and this is my new beginning, and this time, I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest! I've been missing out on so much, but I'm gonna learn all those things here!
I'm going to observe all of it. And I'll become someone I always wanted to become. It may take a very long time, but I'll definitely do it. I love this friend. <laughs> I wanted to reveal Hinamizawa Syndrome to the world. I wanted the world to acknowledge my grandfather's masterpiece. I wanted to carve his name in history and promote him to a god. My grandfather waited believing that day would come, and he must be patiently waiting still, even after entering his eternal sleep. But I ruined it. I wanted him to become a god. I was going to become a god myself too. And then we'll be together forever, and I'll never have to be alone. If I become a god, god won't test me. There won't be any unhappiness. There won't be a sudden train accident. My grandfather won't go away, nor will Uncle Koizumi. I'll never have to go back to being alone. I am alone. I have no allies. I was just dancing in ecstasy on a stage without anybody watching. I had only just realized that there was no applause, but only ridicule. No, it's doubtful that there was actually anyone in the audience to begin with. My parents died, my grandfather died, and then Uncle Koizumi died. Three times had God toyed with me in the rolls of the dice. I thought I had overcome each of those trials in my own strength, but I didn't. I was protected by a new guardian each time, and this time I have no guardians left to protect me. When I first arrived in Hinamizawa, I had every intention of challenging God and kicking him off his throne. But now forget challenging God. I'm just a loser being played with. I suddenly can't find it within myself to care about anything. Because if I cared, I'd be swallowed by the sadness soaking my heart and alcohol is all I can do to forget about everything. A luxurious black car that abruptly stopped next to me. I became sober immediately as the cars like that reminded me of the time I was captured from escaping from the orphanage. Suspicious looking men in black suits and sunglasses came out of the car. I realized it instantly. They must have been sent by one of my clients, being involved in the development of a biological weapon and being the main person responsible for it, and on top of that, being mentally unstable. They obviously don't want me walking around freely. They're going to abduct me, seal me in concrete, and erase my existence, or so I thought. I expected them to grab me and shove me into the car, but surprisingly they bowed deeply to me instead. Are you the vice administrator of the Erie Institute, Major Takanomiyo? Normally, yes. I'm just a drunk loser at the moment, though. There's someone who would like to meet with you. Would you please come along with us? Even if I refuse, you're going to take me along anyway, right? I'll be killed anyway. I can't make my grandfather's wish come true, even if I live. Cynical thoughts like that ran through my head. And the person in the back seat said, We won't force you, but I'm sure we can help. I've never met this young woman before. She must be around my age. She knows about the Erie Institute, so she must be somehow connected to my clients. She's too young to be one herself. I bet a client who doesn't want to expose himself sent her. Even if I live, I can't make my grandfather a god. I can't be a god myself either. Who cares about whether a loser like me gets killed anyway? I made up my mind and got into the back seat. As soon as I got in, the luxurious car smoothly took off. Silence filled the car for a time. They're the ones that invited me. I don't have anything to say myself. Long time no see, but I'm sure you don't remember. We met in passing at Koizumi's funeral. Oh, we did. Sorry, I don't remember. There were so many people at that funeral, I can't recall any of them. But why is that that's what she's opening with? Does that mean she belongs to the Koizumi faction? Koizumi was a very active as one of the opinion leaders during the post-war restoration. You can't begin to talk about the way the country is today without mentioning his accomplishments. When we were rebuilding the country from the burnt fields after the war, our nation's support were united, but unfortunately, it's hard to say that now. As our time of peace grew longer and we started seeing the generation who didn't remember the burnt fields become key national figures, we saw a decline in those who understood the noble intentions we started with. As the final remaining member of those noble men, Koizumi was a central pillar guiding us into the 21st century. 
After his death, the Khoisan faction quickly fell, and as a result, the other factions are extending their influence, leading everything to become quite a mess, right? I heard about these things from Jiro. It's really no different from the Sengoku era, when a lord or a military leader died then, and the struggle to become his successor brought about chaos to the nation. This country hasn't changed for hundreds of years. Exactly. Unfortunately, while we built peaceful Japan into a comfortable place to live, the noble intentions that guided us from the outset have been forgotten. Right now, various factions are fighting in Tokyo over the seat left behind by Koizumi. If Koizumi and the other deceased servicemen ever found out about this, they'd be so disappointed. What does that have to do with me? Aren't you the biggest victim of all this? I think you had enough experiences with sudden shifts in the wind, haven't you? It's true that our research began because of Koizumi's support, and the pressures we face under the anti-Koizumi faction have been tempestuous and cold. Maybe for them every project that Koizumi left behind is an eyesore, regardless of what that project is. In other words, what simply means they've rejected the research itself, doesn't it? Come to think of it, something like this happened to my grandfather too. Back then Koizumi brought authorities from various fields to see him. They talked down to my grandfather despite the praise they'd given earlier. Poisoned me told me that the masterminds were responsible for that. It's not too much of a stretch to say that your research in Hinamizawa Syndrome is the number one leader in the terms of funding, organization, and so forth in the terms of the project within the Alphabet Project. Therefore, it's been made into a scapegoat by those people who want to monopolize the interests of the project. A scapegoat? What I mean is that your research into Hinamizawa Syndrome isn't what they rejected. What's important to them isn't the content, but the faction leading the project. I want to tell you that today. In the end, I'm just a sacrificial goat put up for everyone to see, huh? It doesn't matter what I research. The only thing they care about is what belonged to the Koizumi faction. That's correct. The faction in control is like the direction of the wind. Sometimes it's a tailwind, and sometimes it's a headwind. Unfortunately, once the direction changes, it's not easy to turn that back around. So you're saying it won't be easy to bring the hostile clients back? That's correct. The Alphabet Project has been taken over completely. All the directors have been replaced, and they're only interested in fulfilling their own desires. From the very beginning, they had no intention of listening to your explanation. I grasped my knees remembering that humiliating day. Let me change the subject for now. What would you consider the objective of your research, Takano? That is, to fulfill my intellectual curiosity. Isn't that the promise you made with the Dr. Takano, whom you looked up to as your grandfather? Well, that's surprising. Koizumi once told me this fact could become a hindrance, so I never told any of my clients about it. How did she find out? If they know that, maybe they know a lot more about us than I think. Where did you hear that? Koizumi told me. What? We're not your enemies. Please relax. We're here to help you. I don't know who she really is, but I know she's here because she wants something from me. So what is it that she wants? She knows about the relationship between my grandfather and me, so I can't be careless. But in order for us to help you, we need to have you tell us the truth. In other words, we want you to be honest. I don't know what you're trying to say. What is your true purpose in researching Hinamizawa Syndrome? To have my grandfather's masterpiece acknowledged for what it is, and to have him become a god. Isn't it to have the world acknowledge the late Dr. Takuno's research, and to get revenge against those who trampled upon and looked down on the articles your grandfather wrote with all his heart? I'm reaching up my limit of not letting my surprise show on my face. How much does this woman know about me? In the first place, who is she? How does she know everything I'm thinking? I can't admit that out loud in any case. I have my appearances to consider. But while this elegant woman was wearing an angelic smile, she laughed with the devil's seductive whisper several times better in it than I am. A simple smile and a devilish grin are completely different. An ordinary smile means goodwill, but a malicious smirk means the complete opposite. This woman can read my deepest thoughts, and while doing so, she's testing me to see how honest I can be with her. Whether I tell her the truth or not isn't the issue here. She's testing me to see if I can trust her enough to confess everything. 
If I've completely misunderstood, please forgive me. We'll take you to the nearest train station. That'd be Gogora Station, wouldn't it? Well... On the other hand, if what I'm saying is somewhere close to what you're feeling, I think we can help each other. What do you think, Takanomio? I can't say anything in reply, but I think that simply remaining silent might also be an answer. I want to hear what she wants from me. I always praise my objective as something vague idea of turning my grandfather into a god, but she just taught me what my true objective is. I want to get revenge for my grandfather's suffering. I want those people to fight over the right to read the article once they trampled on the mocked. I want them to believe, no to worship, every single word my grandfather left behind. That's my true objective. This woman stated out loud, that, at which I only whispered within myself. She even asked me if I was correct. Is this woman an angel or a devil? If I'm a human, is she existence above me? Your misfortune was that you didn't understand your true objective. That's why you couldn't achieve anything. You set an abstract goal, like uncovering the mysteries of Hinamizawa Syndrome, which can never be achieved, so you couldn't help out the question the meaning of your own life. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's wrong. Your actual objective is your earnest dream isn't so abstract. Can you imagine? Just think of this scene. The true leaders of this nation are reading your grandfather's article while shocked at its contents and they believe all without even a hint of a doubt. These people humbly read the article with footprints on its back, and they express their respect to the insightfulness of his research and tremble in fear of its implications. What do you think? Were you able to imagine it? This is my first time envisioning something like this, and yet it's my dream all along. Your grandfather is the one who named a Hinamizawa syndrome, yes? That name will echo in every corner of the nation, and will be carved into eternity. Carved into eternity all time. Indeed. Your grandfather's masterpiece will be remembered forever. <laughs> Isn't that the dream that you devoted your whole life to realizing? <laughs> My grandfather's masterpiece will be remembered forever. Remembered. Forever. And yet, those pigs who couldn't understand turned your dream into a sacrifice simply because of a factional conflict of interest. They're even trying to trample it onto the ground. Just like how they kept trampling on your grandfather's article. See? <laughs> you must be full of regret. The data you worked so hard for is indeed the same as the article your grandfather did his best to produce. You can't forgive the people who laughed at it. You can't forgive those pigs that ridiculed your grandfather's masterpiece, right? Aren't I right? <laughs> I know I am, but you didn't think about that because you're so kind as to not know how to condemn people. See? An indescribable emotion is filling me, making me feel like I'm suffocating. The sensation of being conscious and calm, of trust and mistrust, are all blending together. My heart is beating fast and my fingertips are shaking. Why am I at peace? It's because she reminded me of my true dream that I couldn't express with my own words until now. It's because she made me aware of the anger within myself. Why am I hesitant? It's because she reminded me of things I never told anyone until now. No, those are the things I never even told myself. Hey, Mia. If what I'm saying isn't wrong, but is in fact completely true, I know I can help you with both your dreams and revenge. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you feeling alright? If that's the case, I shouldn't keep you. We'll take you to the nearest station. N no. A small noise leaped pathetically out of my mouth like a child apologizing for a prank. Did you say something? <laughs> I know she heard me. That one smile trying to make me say it again. That's not it. I'm doing perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm glad. Let's continue then. If that is, in fact, my dream, then what can you do? I'll help you with both your vengeances. One is the vengeance for your grandfather. We'll make those people who ridiculed your grandfather's article humbly take into their hands once again. 
the one they violated. The other is revenge against the board of directors for trampling over your research simply because of their factional conflicts. Revenge against the filthy pigs who tried to stomp on not only your work, but your life as well. Getting revenge against the board of directors by having them read my grandfather's article. We'll be honest with you, too. We're helping you because our interests are the same. We can't allow the project that Koi's may establish for the sake of Japan's future be eaten up by those lowlives after his death. If we had more power, we wouldn't have allowed that scum to be involved at all. However, the wind started blowing in a different direction, and the project can no longer express Koizumi's ideals. It has become a pigsty from the distress by their own desires. Koizumi gave them the name Alphabet Project. We have not wished for it to remain this way. The project should have been shut down the minute it deviated from his ideals. So you're trying to make the sacrificial sheep of the factional conflict into a wolf, aren't you? If you choose to keep your grandfather's article hidden away in your heart, then I won't force you. No. I won't let that happen. I don't mind falling into the ground myself, but at least my grandpa... My grandpa's article... Don't you want to make the article that represents you and your grandfather's lies into something that will last forever? <laughs> After all, that's your dream, isn't it? That's right. That's my reason to live. We'll give you a chance to make your dream come true. Well, the night I decided I was a loser in life and drowned myself in tears and alcohol after being abandoned by everything. I met someone who could be an angel or a devil. This is divine salvation or a devil's seduction. I fought with the board of directors regarding the continuation of our research, but that was completely off target. That wasn't my true goal. My objective isn't continue researching Hinoizawa syndrome. It's to have the world acknowledge my grandfather's research as a masterpiece. Somehow the method for achieving that swapped places with my objective and caused me to misunderstand myself. The purpose of my life isn't continued grandfather's research. It's to get revenge and to repay them for my grandfather's suffering. That's what this woman is saying. She's promising to make my grandfather's research eternal. She's also promising an opportunity to take revenge against those who laughed at it. When Uncle Koizumi died, I thought God was playing with dice with my fate. But my unshakable conviction gathered together a power stronger than God's die. So maybe this meeting happened for a reason. Curse you, God. You're testing me again. I'll overcome the death of Uncle Koizumi, and I'll make my grandfather an eternal existence by taking revenge against those who stood against me. The God that tested me. I will for certain. I will take my revenge. Uh-oh.